What's up guys, John Bird III here. We're back again for another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a shallow water technique that you can do in the summertime, bright early in the morning, right at safe light when you're blasting off, you pull up to your first spot. If you're fishing shallow water, this is a great technique that you can do and you can catch straight up bigs. But before we jump into this video, I wanna to talk to you about a tournament that's coming up here on Lake Murray. It's at the end of August. It is the last week in August. It is called the Guardian Classic. And this is a tournament that gives back to our veterans. It is a tournament to where a regular boater, somebody that's a non-vet get pairs up with a vet and you take a vet out fishing, y'all fish the tournament. It's from safe light to two or three and it's guaranteed $3,000 first place. Last year, the tournament was awesome. I didn't get to fish the event, but I brought my uncle out to the event because he's a disabled Vietnam vet. Um, they had Daniel McGee who fishes the NPFL. He brought an amazing, ma amazing, amazing word um, for everybody after the event. The food was awesome. They had great raffle prizes. Strike King of Lose gave out a whole bunch of stuff. Then there was just all kind of raffles and stuff like that. So you definitely want to check this out. Reach out to Bobby Edwards if you want to fish this event. Let me just tell you, if you don't know who Bobby Edwards is, if you're in the Columbia, South Carolina, maybe the Saluda, Lexington, Chapin area, if you don't know who Bobby Edwards is and you've never heard his testimony, I promise you, you definitely want to hear it. Straight up, a straight up down to earth, great guy. He's a believer. And not only that, he retired from the military. So we're ever so grateful for all our veterans and everything that they've done for this country. We just got out of 4th of July and everybody went out celebrating, having fun with that. But we can't forget our service men and women who serve this country to protect the country while we go out there and do stuff that we love to do like fishing and fishing tournaments. So you definitely want to go check this tournament out. Again, it's called the Guardian Classic. It's at the end of August. It's the last Saturday in August. You definitely want to check it out. It's going to be a fun event. Now, so to jump into our technique specific video today, you know what that is? We're going to talk about good old old school bait, the good old buzz bait. So the other day, and I post a picture, you should be able to see it now, but um, I was on Lake Murray, caught a freaking six pounder going down the bank with a buzz bait first thing early that morning. I mean, came up and locked it up. So we're going to talk about why I like the buzz bait in the summertime. Why is it a great bait just to use first thing in the morning and that it will definitely just catch you big fish. So to start off with the reel, the reel isn't anything new that we've talked about on the channel, but it is the tier one American hero bait cast reel. Seven five to one gear ratio. Anytime I put this reel in my hands, I just think straight up combat, like I'm ready to go to war. So that's why I put this reel for the buzz bait. Um, like I said, it has a lot of great, great features on this reel because I also mentioned that this is my spinnerbait reel also. So I have one for a spinnerbait and I'd use this one for the buzz bait. So, I mean, shallow water cover, close quarter combat. I mean, come on, American Hero tier one reel, you gotta use it. So that's my reel. I mean, again, 7.5 to gear ratio. I mean, that's the great, I feel like that's the great all around speed for a buzz bait. To be honest, I probably could go up to maybe an eight, even throwing a hyperspeed with a 9.5, but 7.5 to one gear ratio, plenty of power to wrench those fish if I'm definitely, if I'm throwing this alongside of grass and stuff like that. And so the line that I have on here, and I've been, I'm doing some experiment. I know there are some guys who throw straight braid on their buzz baits. There are some guys who throw fluorocarbon. I'm playing with the two. I'm really playing some more so with the fluorocarbon first before I switch to the braid. But for right now, I have 17 pound Contra fluorocarbon. This line right here, super, super strong. I love the 17 pound fluorocarbon and Contra. I mean, it's, it, it, it works. It's, it's strong, it's very durable. And that's why I got it on here. And then the rod, I have the Andy Montgomery Team Lou Signature Series rod. And this is the seven one heavy. Now, I think I've talked about this rod already because I have two of them. And this is one of my favorite rods in, in my whole entire arsenal. And I'm gonna tell you why. So this is a 7-1 heavy, as I already mentioned, and it's a fast action. But in my opinion, this rod is more so like a medium heavy plus. It's not necessarily a true heavy. So it has a great tip to it and it has some give to it. And so I like this rod because it is like a, uh, a multi-tool. I can use this rod for so many different applications. Like if I'm throwing in like super heavy cover, I can throw a chatterbait or bladed jig on this rod 
and the rod has enough power to pull those fish up out of there and it's not going to overpower the bladed jig. I can throw a spinner bait on this rod around super heavy cover. I can skip a jig under dots. I can do some light flipping with this rod. This rod is a straight up multi-tool, light Texas rigs. Anything with those single hook, big hook type deals, you can use this rod for. And that is what I like it for. But it's more so for those places where you're using, I guess you could say, oh, you're fishing more of a, a little bit more heavier cover. It's not like clear, like you're going down the bank around docks and stuff like that, but more so like thicker grass, a little bit thicker grass, a little bit more wood around places. This would be a great rod just for all intense purposes. If where you would traditionally pick a medium heavy, but you feel like the cover might be a little bit thicker, the structure might be a little bit more, I guess you could say a little bit more heavy duty. You can step up to this, like I said, with this rod, and it's like a medium heavy plus, and it's just the right step up. It's not going from a medium heavy to a heavy where it's a big jump. It's just it's just like literally just the right next step, right in between that. And that's why I like this rod. It's literally a multi-tool. Like I said, you can use it for so many techniques, but more so we're talking about big single hook techniques. Now you can actually, and I haven't tried this, but I think this rod would be very good for a frog. And and more so in the and like I said in that in that little bit more sparse cover, but it's just a little bit a little, just not super duper heavy duty, but it's right below that. And I think this rod will work perfect for a frog. I had a situation the other week, and I don't know if I talked about this yet, but I had a situation uh, uh, actually about a month and a half ago on Santee. I was fishing the fishing the terminal Santee fishes a mini event through the pop and perch, couple pops, giant canes up toilet bowl the frog sucked it on there. I set the hook on it with the frog rod, with the Greg Hackney frog rod, the 7.3 Heavy. And with that, I had 65 pound braid. Braid has no stretch and that rod has straight backbone. So when I hit that fish, it literally, and the fish was, it was massive. I hit the fish with it and it snatched the rod out of my hand. I've never had that happen before. And I wondered, my, I, I just thought to myself, I said, I wonder if I should have had a rod that was a little bit softer maybe that wouldn't have happened. So if that has ever happened to you, let me know in the comments, what did you do to make sure that didn't happen again? Should I have, give me some feedback. Should I have went, should I have a little bit softer rod? Should I have been using 50 pound braid instead of 65? Like I'm trying to figure that out. I'm always trying to find the absolute best setup. And I love that Hackney Frog rod, but I wonder if I would have had a little bit softer rod, had that not would have allowed the rod to just literally get the thrown out of my hand. So let me know in the comments if that's ever happened to you and give me some feedback on what you do, what you did to make sure that didn't happen again. So, but again, I think this might actually be good for a frog and I'm going to try that one of these days. But for now, I'm going to stick with the Hackney Frog Rod because that rod is, is a beast, but I got to figure that out. So if you want to try this on a frog, try it, let me know, give me some feedback, but I'm going to try it. And when I do, I'm going to come back to you guys and let you know what, I, what my thoughts are on this. All right, so now we're gonna jump into the buzz bait. So the buzz bait that I use, and you probably heard me mention this before, is the Strike King Tour Grade Skipping Buzz, right? And so this buzz bait right here is very, very unique. And one thing about it, I'm gonna tell you why I think it's very unique. So of course, Andy Montgomery designed this buzz bait in particular. And one thing you know Andy, you know he's very good at is skipping, right? And so there was a lot of thought put into this buzz bait, particularly for skipping, because I fished other buzz baits before, the wire gets all wonky when you catch one, and once it loses its shape, it's hard to get it to, in my opinion, I feel like it's hard to get it back to run right. One thing in particular with the, with the skipping buzz, if you buy this buzz bait, you can buy one with the swim bait, and you can buy one with the little toad on there. So that's why, I, I like the toad more so than the swim bait, but I've thrown both. And like I said, when Andy Montgomery designed this, I tried skipping with it, and this thing skips like a dream. But the one thing that really stands out about this particular buzz bait over others is this little simple thing right here. And let me know if you can see this. So you see this little wire right here? That wire right there keeps this buzz bait in line when you skip it. And even when you catch fish, it doesn't get, the buzz bait don't get all wonky. And so that is what I like about this buzz bait right here. That little feature right there, that little wire. I haven't seen no other company come out with a buzz bait that has this right here to keep your buzz bait in line. And that's why I really, really like this particular buzz bait. It stays together it's, and it doesn't get 
crazy looking. Like I said, when you catch enough big ones on a buzz bait, even a bunch of small ones, like it really gets out of whack. And this buzz bait right here, it stays intact. It keeps its form and it allows it to skip really, really well. Now, one thing that I do, and I'm gonna show you guys this right here. One thing that I do when once that toad tears up, I grab one of these Strike King Rage toads. And actually, you can throw this right here just like on like a big EWG because this is not the same one that's on the skipping buzz, but kind of the same thing. It's literally, well, to be honest, it's the same thing. It's not the same exact bait, but the concept is the same. But the edges on this thing, it has those thick rage flanges on here. And like I said, you could throw this bait just like it is, and they're already super duper heavy. Like they got a lot of weight to them. So you can throw this by itself, get you like a five odd, maybe like a, I think owner has a, one of their twist lock hooks and put the, twi put the twist lock on the head, put your bait in there. And then it has like a little slot right here at the top. And then you tech expose it and you can go down the bank with this thing here and just get bit. Especially if you have like a lot of thick grass. I just had a thought about something um, when I was fishing last week and I probably should have just thrown this by itself. But, cause I was around some thick topped out grass and I started throwing the buzz bait and the, and the grass just started getting all around the, the, the little ribbon and stuff. So uh, I kept having to pull that out, but I think I should have just did this by itself. And like hindsight 2020, sometimes when you're in the moment, you don't, your brain doesn't think 100% clear and my brain wasn't thinking clear. Plus I didn't have these in the boat. So uh, I got a little sneaky too. To, now I can throw next time I'm in that situation, which I know I will be in the next couple of weeks. So anyway, uh, but yeah, you can put one of these on there. If your, if your, uh, if the little buzz toad that, that it comes standard with gets tears up, just put you one of these on there and you'll be good to go. So that's it for today's video. Kind of short, kind of sweet. That's, that's my buzz bait setup. I'm going to be throwing this thing tomorrow. I'm going out on Monticello for a couple hours, me and my buddy Fred, and we're going to try to get after him. And one of the first things I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go down the bait throwing a buzz bait. I mean, because overnight those fish pull up shallow, they start eating, the bait get up shallow and stuff like that. So hopefully right at Safe Flight, I can just go down the bank and just burn it and just hopefully catch some bigs. And hopefully, just hopefully, if you know anything about Monticello, you know Monticello got some smallmouth in there. So hopefully, and those, and those smallmouth that sit in Monticello, they normally sit shallow. They sit like largemouth. So hopefully, just hopefully. Um, last year in August, I caught a four pounder on the mock slack jaw. No, I'll tell you about the mock bouncer, the little crankbait. I caught a four pounder on the mock bouncer last year. It was crazy. So hopefully I can get another four pounder, maybe even catch an even bigger smallmouth on the buzzbait going down the bank first thing in the morning. So we're going to find out. Stay tuned. Check out my Instagram. Check out my Instagram. Check out the stories on my Instagram. Um, if I catch a giant smallmouth, you'll definitely see it all on my social media. So go follow me on Instagram, JB3 underscore fishing. Go follow me on TikTok. JB3 underscore fishing. I haven't mentioned any of my other social media pages, but like I said, go follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. And again, you'll get to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff, what's going on. And guess what? iCast is literally a week and a half away. So it is going to be super duper fun. Whole bunch of stuff coming down the pipe. And so you're definitely going to want to, you definitely going to want to stay tuned. Got something sneaky right there already. But anyway, I got to get back to living the dream. I got to get ready to go catch some bigs tomorrow. I'm JB3, and I'll catch you later.